Right, here is another massive YouTube channel misinforming people. So many of you will have heard of WTF1 and they will have done multiple videos. They've got a million and 60,000 subscribers. If you type in WTF1 Abu Dhabi 2021, this is the results that um, come up. And I'm going to go, go through this one, what went wrong. Okay, how the FIA messed up the F1 title decider. So here it is, preloaded, so I don't get adverts. And let's go through it. The finish to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix was ridiculous. Yep, yeah, can't argue with that. I cannot believe I'm doing a video like this again already. Just one week after I went on a mad one about the Saudi Arabian. Note that he's having to put all these different graphics in because that appeals to the kids these days. Unless something is visual, there is a stimulus. People switch off. You know, so this is just like, it's a three minute, 46 second long video. So how much information can you convey in that? But all the time it's like flashing here, flashing there, keeping people entertained. But come on, let's be a bit factual. We've just witnessed the most corrupt they, you know, probably wasn't wasn't abundantly clear that it was as corrupt as it was from the outset, but it was certainly the most controversial ending to a sporting event. And you, you'd like, you're just kind of trivialising it with this level of presentation. And you, you're doing that knowing you've got a million people following you, but maybe they only follow you because this is this is all they can handle. But anyway, I'm going to carry on. Grand Prix. But here we are after the title decider and I'm left with this very sour taste in my mouth. Do you know what I mean? Is, is, really? There's been talk about the FIA and how their decisions of late appeared to be trying to create a close championship fight that goes all the way down to the wire. Saudi is a great example of this, proving with telemetry that Max brake checked Lewis and only giving a 10 second penalty for something that could have easily gone as far as disqualification. So there you go. Brazil? could have been disqualified for running a guy off the track because Schumacher got disqualified for a whole season for intentionally trying to take somebody out, okay? And what Max Verstappen did in Brazil on Hamilton was clearly that, and then the same in Saudi, all right? Plus that, I think it's turn one incident in Saudi, that was disgusting as well. But there was easily a black flag there. The, 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 whole, the whole setup for Abu Dhabi would have been completely different then. But hey, we all just thought, okay, they won a level on points decider, which, if true, is absolutely not on. But we arrived in Abu Dhabi all the same, winner takes all. You would think after the absolute travesty of one week ago, the FIA may have... So is this what I need to do in my videos? Just have lots of little cut and pasted little graphics here and there so that you can actually understand the words that I'm saying. Put pictures to words. Fuck me shown some sort of transparency with how they're looking to at least improve their communication to teams and also the fans watching. But nope, there was none of that and we all just went into the last race praying it would be settled on track. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. Let's take a look at how the FIA managed to screw up yet again. First up, we have the controversial lap one turn six incident. Max okay, let's listen to his description of this because this isn't horrendous, but could be better. Verstappen did a pretty big lunge on Lewis Hamilton because he knew they had to get ahead of the Mercedes who was running on the more durable media. Right. All season, these lunges were validated. All season. Okay? It was only Karen Chandock's analysis of Max's aggressive sty uh, driving style where he just throws it into corners, causing him to, guess what? Understeer. Well, that's what happens when you go into a bend too fast. Your car carries on in a straight line. It doesn't steer around the corner as you intend it. It, it doesn't steer. It just carries on. That's what... Don't describe it as an understeery driving style. It's just fucking it into a bend too, like, too, too fast. And basically, if somebody's there, you're going to smash into them. Because that's what Max does. All right? But that got validated all 2021. Now, those of you that watched the Monaco Grand Prix at the weekend, you might have heard Brundle say, oh, uh, driving standards. Now, you Max fans, you probably never heard that term before. You didn't realise that was a thing. But those of us that have been watching the sport for 35, 40 years, we know about driving standards and we know that what Max does is totally unacceptable. 
But that's been validated all year. Turn six or turn seven, whatever it was, where Max once again sent it up there. That contravened driving standards because it left no track room for Lewis Hamilton. But what happened was it caused a controversy where it becomes this talking point about, oh, well, Hamilton did something wrong there. No, the fault was with Verstappen being allowed to drive in a way that's not acceptable. But this is another problem that we have to address in a different way. OK, that is a an issue that is a validatory uh, little thing that the Max boys want to latch on to and go, yeah, what about turn one? What Not about, sorry, turn, not turn one. What about lap one? What about lap one? What about lap one? Because that's all they keep whinging about because they don't know anything about what they've, they've been told. They don't know, but they think they do because they've been told that because that's what they were told that season, right? They've been misinformed by the sport itself. But nobody else is contra countering that and saying, hey, this sort of thing isn't allowed. Why is it that they are just making it look like it's acceptable? Christian Horner going, let them race. Let's call it let them race. What does that mean, Christian? You can just fuck your car at another car and, and run them off the road and just call that let them race. Mate, that is bullshit. Absolute bullshit mediums compared to his softs. Now, as much as I am of the opinion that it didn't warrant any sort of penalty for Lewis, I very much feel that Max left him no room. I'm also an armchair expert and I can nice absolutely graphics. understand the other side of the argument too. It's literally the last race of the... To be fair, these twatty graphics just piss me off. ...season and Hamilton has indeed cut over the track to maintain position over Max, which is a big moment in deciding who would potentially be champion. The safe option, you would think, would be to instigate an investigation to make sure that there was no... Look, these clips are just fucking bullshit. But again, what he's doing there, he's fence-sitting, OK? He's fence-sitting where he doesn't want to offend anybody. He wants to, you know, appeal appeal to the Lewis fans, saying, in his opinion, Lewis didn't do anything wrong, but actually to the Max fans. But they should have done a full investigation there, Max fans. Because, you know, maybe you feel that you were hard done by there as well. Let's just please everybody rather than tell people what is factually correct. No foul play involved. Alas, they did not. Oh, oh you'd God. like another screw up? Oh, go on then. Let's talk about how long it took to deploy the virtual safety car when Giovinazzi retired. Italian Jesus himself unfortunately retired during his last race in Formula One and stopped out on track at a high speed section. And for whatever reason, there was a significant portion of time where the drivers were still circulating at quite a speed before. A it's a valid point. It is a valid point. OK, the, the, there's been numerous occasions where an incident occurs and there is a huge delay before a decision is made. And that is a valid point that he makes there. And that this this I, I agree with him on this. For eventually deploying the virtual safety car, which was so obviously needed, the second Antonio stopped. You may think it's a small oversight, but I hate to see F1 cars stopped in dangerous locations and the FIA not acting quickly enough. Let's know That's because Massey was always incompetent. Nepotism gave him that job. He slid into a job and he wasn't ever good enough for it. Okay, Brown nosed himself up to Charlie Whiting and got gifted the job. Now get on to the big talking point, the end of the race. After Nicholas Latifi binned it on lap 53, the safety car was quite rightly deployed as his Williams was in pieces on the circuit. That's all fine. The FIA then announced that lapped cars were not allowed to pass because they thought that was the only way they would get one lap of racing and to not finish this... Right, so again, this is the bullshit. Let me just rewind that for a few seconds and replay that to you. So let's go back to... Oh, look at this for a graphic. This prick clapping his hands. Pieces on the circuit. That's all fine. The FIA then announced that lapped cars were not allowed to pass because they thought that was the only way they would get one lap of racing and to not... The FIA announced that lapped cars would not be allowed to pass because that's the only way they would think they would get one lap of racing. Why are you just parroting the narrative? All right. Why are you just coming out with bollocks that you are just affirming to people misinformation? And it is so, so simple.
This is the FIA Sporting Regulations for 2021, issue 13, issued um, on the 8th of December 2021. These are the safety car section of the regulations. 48.12, if the clerk of the course, this is a bit that's highlighted in blue, if the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so, and the message, lapped cars may now overtake, has been sent to all competitors via the official messaging system, any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car. So let's see how that sentence starts, that paragraph starts. Well, it's a sentence, isn't it? If the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so. Right, so it's about safety. So what if he, what if it's not safe to do so? Well, if it's not safe to release the lapped cars, Max fans, do you think it's safe to go racing? I'll give you the answer again. No. Simple. If it's not safe, you can't go racing. As soon as a track is declared safe, you have to do the unlapping procedure so that you actually sort out the order of cars in the correct order to nullify advantages, reset the whole situation back to a zero advantage situation, okay? And then you can start. That's the only valid start condition. It's the only valid start condition. As you would at the start of a race, first down to 20th in the right order, okay? If a safety car incident occurs before in, in the early stages of a race, before there's any lapped cars at all because the leaders haven't got round and lapped the back markers, right? When they're all bunched up, the running order is first down to last. First down to 20 if there's no re retirements. That is the only valid restart order. So once the clerk of the course declares that track safe then you have to do the procedure to get to achieve that valid restart order of first down to in this case it was 14th I believe I think Mick Schumacher was the last running car of being 14th so that has to be achieved but what you're saying if we go back here, is you've just given us this scenario. Firstly, they announced that lapped cars were going to stay where they are because that's the only way they thought they could get a race. Well, you can't get a race like that. Say it. Tell the whole world that was never a valid possibility. Never a valid possibility. And yet, Sky Sports, Martin Brundle... David Croft lied to tell you it was because that was gaslighting you. That was confusing you. That was making you think, oh, oh, could this happen? Could this happen? Are we going to get this racing lap? Oh, but if we are, it's fine because Lewis is going to be five cars ahead. So he'll be long down the road. So it's all right. It's all right if it happens. It's all right. Oh, they're now moving out the way. Oh, they're now moving out the way. Now we've got just Lewis and Max. Now we've got just Lewis and Max. One lap. Wow. 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 What's happening? No. No, it's it's not it's not exciting. You've just broken the rules. And some of us knew that straight away. Some of us could see that. Finish this epic season behind the scenes. Some of us car. some of us What's were the... watching that. Some of us were watching it live and just saying, Yep, yeah, they'll just they'll have to reverse that, they've got that wrong. Because we knew. Because we knew. Because we knew the implications. Not read the rules. But you've watched Formula One for long enough to know what the standard procedure is and you realise why it is that way. It's there for a purpose. You can't do it without that because of what it creates. It creates fixed outcomes. It ruins 
that race for certain competitors, which breaches the whole FIA International Sporting Code, which dictates sporting fairness to every competitor in that event. So you cannot let a safety incident actually totally compromise certain drivers' races. The same set of circumstances has to apply to every driver, every competitor in that race. And that's what it's all about. And it's quite simple. And it's simple to explain. But nobody ever has. Nobody has ever done this. Sky Sports have never done it. It is simple. And they've not done it for a reason. Because if they ever do it, it exposes Abu Dhabi. They didn't do it beforehand. Because that meant that they could get away with Abu Dhabi. They've not done it since. Because they've expo that would expose themselves. And no big YouTube channel is good enough. Because they've done one of two things. They've either towed the line with F1. Or they've set themselves up as a knowledgeable individual to be able to talk about F1. And they haven't got the intellect or knowledge to be able to do it properly. So that's the situation. You've got the blind leading the blind. You've got the misinformed giving out misinformation to people to educate them. That's a problem. That's a big problem. This decision was made, it was then randomly decided out of nowhere that lapped cars may overtake, but only the five cars in between Lewis and Max. Very strange, not only does this go against what they had just announced, but also gives an unfair advantage to those five cars that were allowed to unlap themselves. Look, even that description bullshit. It gives an unfair advantage to those five that are allowed to unlap themselves. Well, that is... that is... You, you've forgotten the fact that Norris, who is now seventh, has no chance of catching Pierre Gasly in sixth. So where's Norris's unfair advantage? See, that, see that, that, that's just a, a ridiculous statement, isn't it? Yes, they've got an unfair advantage over Daniel Ricciardo, who wasn't released, and Lance Stroll and Mick Schumacher, who weren't released. But them five cars themselves has been left at a huge disadvantage from ever being able to challenge for anything higher than seventh position. You fix their races. Daniel Ricciardo, he'd changed onto soft tyres. You know, look at, look at all the competitors that had changed onto soft tyres, which were Max Verstappen and the two Alpha Tauris and Perez. So hmm, all four of the Red Bull uh, team cars Managed to change onto soft tyres. Hmm. Amazing strategists, aren't they? It's as, as though they uh, had some foresight as to what might happen. Either that or they just, yeah, just all got lucky, played some clever cards. Well, Daniel Ricciardo, he changed onto soft compound tyres. Did he get the opportunity to have the advantage of using them to gain places? No, he didn't. All right, but trying to present that these five cars have now got an advantage, you, you're not spelling out the true nature of the scenario that took place. And really, what you want to do is is cover it all to show people just how bad it was. But what you're doing, you just it's a just it's it's not it's not knowledgeable enough, and it's not clear cut enough what you're saying. Oops really quite unheard of and clearly an attempt to get the showdown that they so dearly want. I agree with that graphic because that's what they're turning this shit show into. Tid. All in all, we have had an incredible F1 season. The problem is that it's incredible. Let's clap it, shall we? It's disgusting what they've done. Been tainted slightly by certain people within the FIA. Tainted slightly. They've obliterated sport. They have totally obliterated sporting values, sporting fairness, integrity. They've misinformed people. They've miseducated people. They've lied to people. They've, they've fixed the outcome of a race fraudulently. They've deprived the true champion of the sport of a record-breaking historic achievement by fixing it 
for the desired competitor that they wanted to install as champion. And they've all made a shitload of money out of it. That's the true nature of what went on. Not really seeming to have a clue what's going on half the time. They had a clue. They were manipulated. The FIA was controlled. This man was a puppet. He was controlled by forces above him, making him make the decisions he made to facilitate their desires and the outcomes that they wanted. That's the simplicity of it. This man was a puppet. Time. As I said for the Saudi video, and I'll say again, this cannot go on and needs to be sorted for the 2022 season. See, that worked, didn't it? That worked. There you have it, an insight into how the FIA messed up the F1 finale. Do you agree with what's been said? What's your opinion on the whole ordeal? Let us know in the comments section below. Yeah, let us know in the comments section below. Woohoo! Um, Max fans, don't. I'm really not interested. You're not going to uh, inform me with any insight that I don't already know. So um, just, just don't waste your time because... I'm not interested in what you have to say, but thanks anyway. Oh. Right. So once again, we've got a YouTuber with over a million subscribers producing videos to try and explain stuff to people about what went, what went, happened, what took place. And that is the level of insight they are passing on to people. No wonder when you are um, explaining the reality of it and you break it down, most people will look at what you're saying and will think that what you're talking about, mate, it didn't happen like that. We all know that it was just a mistake by Massey. We all know that it was just this crazy few minutes and he was under pressure and all the teams wanted a racing finish anyway. And Martin Brundle told us that they could race like this anyway. And it's all fine. It, it was just controversial. It was just... But when you break it down and you evidence it, people don't believe the evidence because they can't get their head around just what truly happened. They can't see, even though it's straight in front of their eyes, that the whole thing was contrived. But this, this is what is part of the problem. Everything has validated it. Everything... Even this, although it calls it out more than the Driver 61 video, right, it still doesn't drill down to the key points and it doesn't expose reality. And, and this is the difficulty. So we've got to find a way of getting this out there. Because as soon as people realise the true magnitude of the rule breaks and what was possible and what wasn't, and how these experts of the sport are convincing people things that they're claiming are possible when they absolutely aren't, that is when you realise the true level of corruption going on. Right, that will do on this one. Thanks for your time again.